this video, I'm going to tell you about the principles of Advantage and how you can use them to be a better applicant, whether that be for professional schools or other recruitment processes. My name is Danny Klein. I'm going to share with you the principles of Advantage, as well as how you can use networking effects to your uh, benefit to gain advantage in any application process. Gaining advantage is a long-term process. It doesn't start the day before you start an application. So I'm going to get into it, but keep that in mind throughout the video. Let's start off with what is advantage. So if you think of advantage as a bell curve, where you have a distribution of the number of people based on their advantage on the x-axis, and then on the y-axis, you will have the people who have been assorted into that category of advantage on the x-axis. Think of it like a histogram, if that is a part of your vocabulary. If you're not familiar with the bell curve already, think of it as having a large number of people in the center with some people doing poorly on one extreme, and on the other extreme, you have the best performers in some category. To gain an advantage, you need to take yourself from being one of the people in the center into one of the people on this positive extreme who are doing well for themselves. But next, how do you actually gain that advantage? To do that, you need to take yourself from that middle point to the extreme. And to get there, you need to be doing something different than everyone else in the middle. There's a reason why there are so many people in that middle area of the bell curve. And that's because they're all doing the same things or the same thing with some minor variation. If you wanna be on the extreme that's doing better for themselves, then you need to be doing something different from them. Now, that's the principle of advantage, but it's also important to think about disadvantage because doing something different can also put you in a disadvantageous position because there is a reason why the people who are on the other end of the bell curve are there. And that's because they're doing something different than everyone else who's either in that central area or on the extreme end. You can think about this in terms of the stock market, where the majority of investors that get the average 8% per year gain on their money are going to be doing the same thing. They'll be investing in things like exchange traded funds or mutual funds, which tend to be less individual skill based and more convenient. You also have on the other extremes, people who have decided to individually pick stock. For them, they've decided to take a risk and that risk could either go extremely well for them and put them on that more positive extreme that allows them to do better than the average person who's put their money in a mutual fund or exchange trade fund. And on the other end, you have the other extreme. These people could have also been individually picking stocks, but the difference between those who did well for themselves and those who didn't is that the choice of stock. As you can see, these risk-taking decisions are what put us at an advantage. Essentially, you need to be taking controlled risks. What that means is going out and making decisions that have the potential to give you larger upside than downside. And when you take controlled risks that have asymmetrical benefit to you, you can eventually gain an advantage with a high number of repetitions of that controlled risk taking. And now we're going to get into networking effects, which are the third part of this little lesson on the principles of advantage. And we're almost at the point where we'll talk about actions that you can take to put yourself in the right direction towards gaining an advantage. Before we get there, I'm going to introduce you to one more principle, and that is called Metcalfe's Law. Metcalfe's Law has to do with networking effects. And I'm just going to read you a definition before we go any further. Metcalfe's law says that a network's value is proportional to the square of the number of nodes in the network. So to put that in tangible terms that you could actually understand, that means let's say we have 10 people in our network of individuals. The nodes in this network are individuals who we've gained contacts with and started to really establish ourselves in a professional sense then the value of our network would be 100. But let's say we increased the number of people in our network to be 20 from 10. That would put us at a value of our network of 20 to the power of two, meaning 400. So essentially by adding 10 more people to our network or doubling our network size, we have 
expanded the value of our network by four times. To put this in a context that you could actually understand, I'll tell you about how I've applied this in my own life. During my undergraduate degree, I established myself as one of the central players in this field called One Health at my university. I reached out to professors to establish my network. I started what was called the Western One Health Club at Western University. And then I started a podcast to further take my network beyond my university and make it transportable to whatever context I was going to be at. In starting a club, I wanted to make sure that it was something that was new because that made me the protagonist of it. It made me the one who had to set up new connections within the university and seek out collaborators who would be partners and part of my network. This meant reaching out to professors, reaching out to other students at my university, and even reaching out to other students at other universities who had done similar things. By expanding my network that way, I made myself a local name for One Health at my university. Whenever people thought of One Health at Western, they would think Danny Kalani. And then after that, I used a podcast to expand my network beyond just my university, to make my local presence more global. Much like a high school party and being a host of that, you become well known by being the host. By being the host, people start to come to you when they think there's something worth sharing. That means that at the beginning, you're going to have to reach out to people and expand your network that way. But eventually, people will start to ask you to be on the podcast. You'll start to get recognition for what you're doing. You'll begin to branch out and do collaborations with other individuals who are a part of your niche or sector. This puts you in the perfect situation to continue to expand your network and take advantage of the exponential growth known as Metcalfe's Law. Being able to put myself out in such a way allowed me to develop my leadership skills while also building a network of individuals who wanted to support me and see me become successful. This can be the difference between success and failure for you because if people are cheering you on and actively going out of their way to help you out, that provides you with an advantage that can put you in the situation of being more successful. Not only that, you also have increased opportunities coming your way, be that research positions, jobs, or otherwise that help you to develop skills, get references from people that care about you and have an active interest in your future. Although the people in One Health are not the same as the ones involved in the selection process of medical school applications, it still gave me a significant advantage in making my application different from other people. I was able to demonstrate an active interest in an area while also creating connections that are meaningful and lasting that would help as advocates through the application process. Now, how do you apply this to your own life? I want you to think of an area where you're interested and there hasn't yet been someone who's capitalized on that niche in your local area, in your community, whether that be at your university or simply within the area where you live. Now take that idea and develop something out of it. Create an initiative that brings people together and starts to develop that network. Once you've established a network, take it a step further and start to use that network to try and get yourself into new opportunities and positions. And after you've done that, take your network one step further and create another initiative, maybe a podcast or something that gets you talking to people in your sector or niche. Once you've done that, you have made yourself a better applicant that has the soft skills that are sought out by so many different application committees while also putting yourself in a position with strong advocates for your application who genuinely care about your advancing in the application process. Those people will be there for you when push comes to shove and things get difficult, whether that be during an application process or otherwise. In the end, people started to call me the One Health King. And if that isn't enough for you, I don't know what is. Thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed hearing about how you can use principles to improve your life, to make yourself more productive, or just help you get into medical school, make sure to hit subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one.